Hey guys, it's Danny. Today it is time to start repotting season two of our orchid haul watch. And I have here three orchids. Maybe we're gonna do more, but at least three orchids we're gonna try to repot today. They are. Sorry, we have to witness the concert. Yes, it's wonderful. Okay, so. So I have here three orchids that I have stuff to say about or give you tips about and maybe we're gonna do more, who knows, but overall these orchids that we purchased from Look were in pretty great condition. Now some of them were potted in moss and some in bark and you're gonna see the difference in repotting because bark, it's not fun compared to moss, it's really not fun. So we are actually going to start with bark. We're gonna repot this orchid that just bloomed. It finished blooming, if you remember, I purchased it with a bud. It did actually bloom, did not look like the picture on the listing, but hey, it's pretty nonetheless. And it's now time to repot because the roots are growing. We're gonna get to it. So before we start, don't forget to give this video a like if you end up enjoying it and you learned something new and why not subscribe? I post multiple times a week and it's completely free. But if you're feeling a little extra about it and you can, do consider further supporting the channel by becoming a member, checking out the affiliate links, aff affiliate, not affiliate, affiliate links down below, checking out the merch or using the super thanks option below my videos. Right, let's start. This is BLC. Hua Yuan Beauty variety Hong and recently it has bloomed. Now the bloom is gone and as we can see the new growth is starting to put out a really nice root system. So far we have only root tips. At this point it is the most ideal time to repot a Cattleya orchid because Cattleyas, as some of you might know, they don't have the strongest roots, they're quite sensitive, they're prone to losing quite a lot of roots when you repot, especially if they come from bark, and you're gonna see why. After a repot, cattleyas will tend to lose quite a bit of roots, or most cattleyas, let's say. So, if you have no other choice, repot a cattleya whenever you have to, whenever you must. If the medium is broken down beyond belief, if there's a lot of snails that you cannot control, if this or the other, which will affect new roots as well, just repot it is what it is and um, yeah. Do a little dance in the hopes that the orchid will survive. <laughs> and No, I'm kidding. Some cattleyas do have very, very slow growth. So those cattleyas, mm, it's very bad to repot at the wrong time of the year especially the species, like Mosier, I lost my Mosier like that. But if the orchid has no issue and you can wait, I strongly suggest you wait until you see root tips starting. They can start at any time. As the new growth is growing, when it's very tiny, you can start to see them. After the orchid blooms, again, you can start to see them while the orchid matures its growth, but it's not really blooming yet, you can start to see those roots repot then. And even if you have to sacrifice the bloom for the year, if you really have to repot, repot then. Because you will have a brand new root system taking over the pot in no time. If you repot while the new root system is already grown, you're gonna destroy it. You're gonna have six months maybe out of the year without new roots, to take place of the old roots which die during repot and that's not a good situation to be in. Am I making any sense? When you see the first little green nubs, that's when you repot. And I see the first green nubs, so I'd best repot right now. So I'm gonna push or squeeze a bit the pot to release whatever root might have attached to the pot. I have one attached here. Ugh, gonna have to break it, it's okay. Also, don't forget to soak your orchid prior to repotting. This will make the roots a little bit more flexible. Also, it will make the roots expand a little bit. And especially if you have an orchid in bark, you're gonna need those roots to be flexible because bark is really hard to remove from roots. Keep in mind the new roots, try not to scratch them or damage them in any way. Remove the pieces gently from around the new roots and take your time, do not hurry. I'm not entirely sure if I'm in frame, that's why I'm holding the orchid up. I'll put the camera lower when it's time to actually pot it up. But now, I just wanna remove the pieces of bark. And it's not gonna be easy. You will have to grab the piece of bark and jiggle it and jiggle it until it comes off. Because if you just pull on it, you're gonna pull the velamen as well 
and cattleya roots are not known to be okay without portions of development. They're not like Phalaenopsis. They're very, very sensitive. Oh no, I see a snail. Yep, um, I'll have to spray her as well. Right, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to release as many bark pieces as possible. At some point I might go to the sink, run some water. This will help again the roots or actually the bark detach. Oh brother, look at this. This is a very big bark piece. It is attached to this root on its entire length of the bark piece. It's a nightmare. Chunky bark is a nightmare to remove. I understand that it's airy, but it's a nightmare to remove. That's a fact. Oh brother, I have to put it down. See, sometimes it's inevitable that you're gonna damage some roots. I managed not to damage anything. Look at this piece of bark. So I'm gonna take my time and try to remove as many pieces as I can. In the middle I see I have a sort of a root ball that is very old and very not alive anymore. And probably this was a plug. Probably in the middle of this there will be sphagnum moss. So when it was a seedling, this orchid was just up potted. I'll have a Myth or Truth episode that does have a question about up potting. I already filmed it, not sure when I'm gonna post it, maybe in two months. Um, but yeah, up potting, mm -mm, not the best. Look at this. And the worst thing is that the older roots. When they start to break down, they will affect the entire medium and the new roots. So up potting, mm -mm, I would not suggest it. No matter if temporarily you will think, oh, but the roots didn't get damaged and the orchid doesn't have setback. For now, give it time. You're just postponing the inevitable pretty much. Just rip the band-aid and put that orchid in a medium that is better or suits you better just not chunky bark. <laughs> I'm kidding, you can use whatever type of medium you want. I just dislike chunky bark. Right, so I'm gonna continue to do this. And when I'm done, when I remove most of the bark, we're gonna see what to do about all of this dead root mass in the middle. So be right back. All right, so here in the middle, as I anticipated, we have sphagnum moss. Now, it's very broken down, sphagnum moss, it needs to go. So I have two options. Either I start to remove it manually and get a tweezer and like go in there and remove as much moss as possible or remove the entire back section like this, which is actually what I'm gonna do. One thing I always do, especially with cattleyas, is remove the old seedling growth. I have a dead and desiccated uh, cane or pseudobulb here. I need to remove these are very tiny. They're very old They do nothing for the plant anymore other than take space. They don't do anything So there's no point in keeping this side of the orchid. We have a lot of pseudobulbs so what I usually do is Remove this side. I just split the rhizome and it was really really easy to split as you can see, this section takes with it quite a lot of dead roots and sphagnum moss and all of that fun stuff. I still have a little bit of sphagnum moss here. <clears throat> oh my goodness, I inhaled <laughs> this smell. <laughs> it's not funny. So yeah, it doesn't smell too good. It's old, the medium is old. Um, let's see. Should I remove one more piece? I'm gonna remove one more piece because this one has a lot of dead roots. And if it doesn't wanna remove by itself, I am going to use my trusty shears. The rhizome looks very nice, no fusarium. Wiggle it out, there we go. All of these roots are dead. And what I'm left with is this division, which is enough. I have four pseudobulbs here, it's absolutely enough. New root system on the way. There are a few more roots that I need to remove that are not looking good, all you have to do is press on them if you're not sure, and if they're hollow and papery, they're gone. And yeah, let's do this really fast. I'm happy to see the orchid does have a few good roots. This is the ideal scenario for me, just a few good roots, not a whole lot of them because most of them will die. So I have to re-repot in a month. We have a case from last haul, if you remember, from season one. We're gonna go back and see what happened. But in this case, I don't think we need to go back because we don't have too many roots that potentially will not make the transition. 
Um, we're just gonna remove everything that looks sus right now. And we're just gonna leave behind a few roots, not everything. We don't need everything. Okay, so I'm gonna go rinse the root system very well at the sink and also I'm going to spray it with hydrogen peroxide 3%. Now, 3% concentration can be purchased from the pharmacy. You use it straight from the bottle if it's 3%. Needs no dilution, needs no rinsing. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that because I found that snail. And I'm gonna come back with a new pot and of course, my medium. Alrighty, we can now see things a little bit better. No need to see my face all the time. It gets boring real fast. <laughs> so, spray the roots with hydrogen peroxide. I'm all set and I'm going to repot my orchid in sphagnum moss, just my typical medium of choice for my climate here. By the way, there is a difference between climate and environment. I know I kind of keep mentioning them both like they're the same thing, but no, you can actually have very hot climate, but Indoors, maybe it's kind of cool all the time. Maybe you have a system of um, air conditioning units which keeps temperatures easily very cool. So actually, a more correct way of expressing why we tend to choose different types of setups, different types of media, is the environment, right? So if the environment is hot, which mine tends to kind of be, even with my AC, I tend to go for water attentive media and setups and this is i guess as wet as it gets but um it does good it does very good for my cat layers and all other orchids so i'm gonna put the sphagnum moss in in a very fluffy manner i'm gonna push it down a little bit but i'm not going to compact it the roots have a circular shape which it's not very comfortable but i can get around it so the point is to make everything very, very fluffy and breathable. You don't need necessarily extra ventilation holes to make a pot breathable, but extra ventilation absolutely helps in certain environments. It's crucial, in my opinion, in certain environments. So if you must use pots with slits or drill holes in your pots, do so. They will keep you safer. I don't have to, I can get away without. But I used to do them in my previous environment and when I moved here until I figure out how this environment is and how it works, I used to do them. They don't hurt things, but they make the pot dry faster, which turns out is not what we need here. All right, so for this work kit, I'm also going to use my Substral insecticide and fertilizer stick. We're gonna do some tests. Uh, by the way, when I talked about this guy, I said it has pyrethrin. It's not pyrethrin, it's acetamiprid. Not sure about the pronunciation. And I don't know why I said pyrethrins, because in my initial video with repotting another orchid and putting the sticks, I think I said acetamiprid. Uh, but, you know, brain fart. <laughs> Sometimes it just happens. So just so you know, this is not pyrethrin. It's something else. And uh, the orchids that have it, they don't have pests. I think it works great. Sally has fertilizer. If I can find something without fertilizer, I will buy it. But depends on availability and who will ship to Cyprus. Because, you know, it's an insecticide. You cannot just buy it and expect it to be shipped like that willy-nilly. It's insecticide. It needs to go through regulations. This is the European Union. It's not a country. We're a whole bunch of countries that have a certain relation, but we have our own rules. <laughs> so even if I'm trying to buy it from the European Union, it's not that simple. So for this reason, some sellers, depending on the country, just don't ship to me because it's, it's a toxic, at the end of the day, substance and it needs to be regulated. Right, so the moss is very, very fluffy. The top layer is bark as always, and this will stop cyanobacteria from forming and damaging my root tips. The audacity, the audacity on the cyano. And here we are, we are all potted up. Now the sphagnum moss was already wet, but I will give a good watering to this orchid because it has that insecticide and I want it to be soaked. Before we go ahead and do that, let me just tidy up a little bit things. I want to tidy up and I started to tidy up all of my cattleyas because they're growing in all sorts of weird directions and some of them are big. So I'm starting to tidy them up with some string. I don't think it's necessary for this one. I'll show you in another video. What I do is like 
put a string like this, tie it around a pseudobulb, then tie it around a different pseudobulb like this, then go in the back and tie it to this pseudobulb, and in the end, make the orchid tidy. It's not the case with this one. Some of my cattleyas really needed <laughs> some sort of containment. Let's put another one. We can also get rid of this spent flower spike and also this blank sheath from the past. Now the tag. I've started to mark the orchids that have the stick. I think I skipped a few and I don't remember which ones they are. But from now, I mark them, mark the date with a red line. Just so I know. And there we have her. I have an IKEA decorative pot and she is all done. Let us continue with our other orchids which have been soaking in water up until now. Alrighty, now let's repot a cattleya which is potted in sphagnum moss and it's also growing a lot of new root tips. This one has a beautiful root system. Let me show you the difference between bark and sphagnum moss and this is very compacted sphagnum moss. Um, so pull out the pot and now it's time to remove the moss. Many of the times you can remove the moss with your fingers, but sometimes, and especially if it's a tiny pot like this and you have a lot of roots, I find it easier to go with a tweezer. This is one that I use for aquariums. It's an aquascaping tweezer. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove as much of this sphagnum moss as I can. It is a bit time consuming, I, I will give it that, but the effect on the roots is nothing compared to how damaging bark is, right? So we're gonna take a little bit of a break and I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of this moss. 10 minutes. All right, we are done. And yes, you will damage some roots. Sometimes, especially when you use the tweezers, you will pull on what you think is sphagnum moss and it's actually a crunchy root. That will happen, it's inevitable. All repottings can damage roots, but when you deal with bark, the vast majority of roots that you detach from that bark, they will have tiny little bruises, in my opinion. So they will all be bruised, while with moss, you don't actually get that. Yes, you get a few bruises that you create yourself with your fingers, but just removing the moss from the root like that leaves behind no bruise on the velum. And for some cattleyas, a few bruises is enough to make the root just give up absolutely on everything. So I prefer removing moss. Right, so let's go ahead and pot this orchid as well. Same type of mix mixture. It's not a mixture, it's just sphagnum moss. So I'm gonna place sphagnum moss very airy around the root system like so. There were actually almost no dead roots, so I left on quite a bit of roots but I don't think I'm gonna wake up with a mass of dead roots in here. I would not go back for this one unless I detect some weird smells. Because as I was saying, in my experience, removing orchid roots from moss is a little less damaging. If they were all attached to bark pieces, I would go back in a month and this is the damage. I don't think I'm gonna have damage. We'll see, I'm gonna keep an eye on it anyway. Let's put bark. And we are done. I didn't tell you what this is. Uh, Bresso Cattleya Pink Panther DH number eight. Right, so we only have the Phalaenopsis to repot. Phalaenopsis are so much easier to unpot because they have very robust roots. We don't need to fiddle around with them so much as we do with the cattleyas. So typically Phalaenopsis that are in moss are about a million times easier to unpot <laughs> Then the bark ones, and let me demonstrate. This one has been probably up potted as well. There is a lot of sphagnum moss in here, or hmm, maybe not. Maybe we do not have a seedling plug, but as you can tell, <laughs> it's really not hard to remove moss from Phalaenopsis. And Phalaenopsis, again, they tend to really, really, really attach to bark. The good thing is that Phalaenopsis don't have such sensitive roots, but there we have it. My Phalaenopsis is all done. I'm gonna go clean it up a little bit at the sink and I'll be right back. Now with the Phalaenopsis, I will be using this 
insecticide slash uh, fertilizer because fowls are heavier feeders, they don't have sensitive roots, so they should be absolutely fine. And also they're pest magnets, I mean for thrips at least. They are magnets and thrips really do a number on the crowns, on the new leaves actually and I will show you one day. My current mini fowls, they almost all of them have some damage on their new leaf but after the insecticide treatment they all have super green leaves. You can actually see a line that delimits the damage from the healthy growth. It's kind of, it doesn't look good but it's kind of interesting. <laughs> So I definitely would like to have some more protection against thrips with the Phalaenopsis, especially because they can handle a lot more fertilizer than other orchids and actually thrive on a lot more fertilizer. Okay, so this is as much as I'm willing to add. They say to add one stick to about one liter of potting soil and I would say this is maybe a little less than half a liter, this little pot. So a quarter of the stick should be okay. A not a quarter, it's actually a third. Yeah, it's a third of the stick. So we went for the hardest to repot to the easiest in order. <laughs> uh, didn't necessarily plan it that way, but yeah, usually for me, moss is much easier to remove than bark and by easy I'm not saying time consuming. With the moss, especially if it's very compacted, yeah you can spend a while removing that moss if you want not to damage the roots. Uh, but with bark, no matter how much time you spend removing it, it will still damage roots. There, there's no way. It's impossible. It's just the nature of things. And the bark that I use on top, it's not big and it's also not enough to damage any root. It, it's just not enough quantity. Right, so let's write the date on this one as well. And there we have it. Now the other orchids in the hole are pretty similar to these ones. They're all potted, I guess mainly in bark at this point, so yay, it's gonna be so fun. I will go ahead and repot them off camera, but yeah, pretty much that's about it for today. Let me clean my surface and we're gonna do the outro. All right, so my orchids are repotted, but I do have a few more things to talk about before I let you go. One thing I didn't mention, what do I do with the back divisions that I take from the cattleyas? Can they be used to propagate the orchid? They can, but in my experience, they're just not as viable as a proper mature division. That is the oldest growth on the orchid. It doesn't have a whole lot of energy. Most of the times it doesn't even have roots. So in my experience, either you don't actually get anything and the division fizzles out, either you do get something, but it's so tiny that it, it kind of fizzles out, or you do get something that will turn out viable, but it's gonna take a lot of years to mature. And yes, also in some cases it is a viable division, which can get you in time, in many years, a mature orchid. You don't know how it's gonna play out. I think you have more chances of dividing your orchid when it's completely mature. So using mature divisions for propagation. The tiny one, if you wanna keep it and play around, sure. I typically don't keep the tiny seedling back divisions because they're kind of a waste of resources. By the way, did you notice how expensive sphagnum moss got? Oh my goodness. I bought recently some sphagnum moss I don't want to tell you how much I spent. Uh, yeah, so resources are precious. I'm not wasting resources on them. If you want to play around, sure. If I were to keep all of the tiny, tiny divisions that I get from all of my orchids, I would waste all of my sphagnum moss for 20% chance of propagation and I'm not willing to take that chance. Uh, but just so you know, because I'm sure you were gonna ask and this is how I know you didn't watch the video till the end. <laughs> about repotting work is when you see new roots. It is especially important with some cattleyas and some oncidiums in my opinion. With other orchids, maybe not so important. I mean, Phalaenopsis, in my experience, they have such a robust root system that most of the times you don't need to wait for new roots. You can repot whenever, especially if it's necessary. Yeah, I personally just repot whenever. It's very rare that I have root issues with orchids and especially I have root rot issues with new orchids, which 
I don't know what they've been through. I don't know their history and the potting mix they've been in. Typically, when I repot brand new orchids, I have some root loss. When I repot my own orchids, I never have any root loss, no matter when I repot them. With cattleyas though, depending on the individual and with oncidiums, I prefer as much as possible to repot when new roots are growing, both with my old orchids and the new orchids because the setback is real. So if I can push it another month, especially my older orchids, which I know are still in pretty decent medium, I will push it another month until I see roots. I have some big cattleyas that I repotted recently and some that I wish I can repot but I don't see any roots so I'm just not going to because I've waited so many years for those orchids to mature and they have sheets now and fingers crossed maybe they will bloom for the first time. So I'm actively practicing patience with cattleyas. Fowls? No. But cattleyas, yes. I suggest you do wait around for the new roots because even if you're not gonna lose the orchid, the setback, is it worth it? Is it really? It's not. I'm telling you, it's not. So wait for those new roots if you can. Right, so with that said, thank you so much for watching episode two of, I think it's episode two, yeah, of this orchid hole watch. This is season two. And soon enough, season three and four, we'll have some updates. I didn't publish season four yet. Oh, it's a surprise. The orchid garden orchids are a surprise. So stay tuned for that. Uh, we're gonna have updates on those as well. So anyway, let's not blab anymore. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you found this interesting and useful. And with that said, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.